Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorial. Today we are going to learn about the PPE schedule. The PPE schedule is something very simple, okay? It is a tool that we use in published accounts to prepare uh, workings for PPE, property, plant, and equipment. So that we can have our final figure for property, plant, and equipment to take to the statement of financial position in a published account setting. Now, listen very carefully. I keep on telling my students that this PPE schedule that I'm going to teach you is not something that is compulsory to prepare in the exam. However, it is important because it gives you an easy way to bring all items of PPE under control and then prepare them together to get a final figure that you are going to use. And so I'm not going to waste too much time. I'm going to teach you how to prepare the property plant and equipment schedule. And it's going to help you in, in the, both depreciation and as well as ascertaining the carrying amount to be included in your statement of financial position for PPE. So basically, it is like we use it for workings. Instead of doing scattered workings on your assets and then combining to get one figure, we use this as an organized way to prepare all the workings that we need to do on PPE. And it's very, very effective. All right. So let me see the PPE schedule. So you write, you call it the PPE schedule as I've written. And then let's assume you have three items of property, plant, and equipment. So you have motor vehicles, you have buildings, and then you have equipment. So let me also show a total column and a currency sign, which in this case, I'm using the dollar sign. Now, please listen very carefully. Do not include investment property here. Do not bring in any item that is not PP. We know that it's not all buildings that fall under property, plant, and equipment. Some buildings are for investment property. And so when you are solving a question and you see investment property items, please do not bring them into the PPE schedule. Very, very important. So you start with a cost. What we are going to do now is that we have to first of all deal with the cost component. When we are done with the cost components, we deal with the depreciation component. And then we'll know the final net book value to carry. So we'll begin with the cost. So I'll write here cost. And under the cost, I'm going to show the balance brought forward. The balance brought forward that I'm showing for the assets will be the balance brought forward or the original cost that this asset was bought for, which will be shown in the tri balance. So you bring the balance brought forward of the cost component. You see that usually you have, if you have, let's say, equipment, you have at cost, and then you have accumulated depreciation. So you bring the cost that you have on the tri balance here, and then the provision for depreciation on equipment or accumulated depreciation on equipment will go down at the depreciation column. So what I'm bringing here is the cost. So please take note. That is why I have indicated cost and I have underlined. So everything I'm going to talk about is about the cost of the asset. So your balance brought forward for the asset, and then you add them up like that. Then these are the three things you consider. Were there any additions within the year? In other words, did we buy some more of those assets? It's just like the changes in equity. Were there any revaluations within the year? Then we bring that as well. And then were there any disposals? So it's three things. Additions, disposals, and revaluation. Please take note. So for every asset, if you look for motor vehicles, go through your question to be sure if there were any additions, you bought new motor vehicles within the year, you show that as a change. If there were any disposals, you take out the disposal. And the disposal will be the cost component. And if there were any revaluations, you bring the surplus or loss on revaluation. That is how to deal with the cost components of the PPE schedule. So, additions. Let's assume there were no additions here, but there was some additions here. So, you bring the total. And then after additions, you think about disposals. So, you look through the questions. So, the values that I have put for additions will be the cost component, how much it was bought, okay? Then the disposals also, this is where you have to take note, that you take out the cost of the asset being disposed of, not how much you are selling it for. Please take note. 
look for the original cost of the asset being disposed of, just as we did in the depreciation of non-current assets. If you have any issues understanding this concept, go back and watch my video on the depreciation of non-current assets. I explain this into detail. So we take out the cost component of the asset being disposed of from the cost. So that will be in bracket. Let's assume we sold some motor vehicles. We didn't sell any of this. So we show that in bracket. Then after that, the final one you consider is revaluations. So please, it's not something difficult to. Just pay attention. After your opening balance, I said the three things under the cost. Additions, disposals, and revaluations. So if there were any revaluation of, let's say, building, you add that. So you show that also as well. But if it was a negative revaluation, it would have been in brackets. So don't forget that as well. Revaluation could be positive or negative, and we only bring the difference, not the new fair value. We bring only the increase or decrease. Now, once we are done with this trade, there is nothing more. I said there is nothing more. So you add them up. So remember that at the cost portion of the PPE schedule, it is opening balance plus three things which could affect it. Additions, disposals, and revaluation. So if there was no addition of an asset, you leave it. Within the year, if there were no disposals, fine. If an asset didn't get revaluation, fair enough. So when we are done with this, whatever final figure we have in the total column gives us the total cost of the assets that we have. After the cost component, we move on to the depreciation component. So we do them separately. You see, what I'm doing is eh, we replace every scattered working you do on PPE in your published account or final accounts for publication. So you need this very well. So depreciation component. With a depreciation tool, you begin with your balance brought forward, your opening balance on depreciation. So each asset will have their opening balance in a trial, but some of them may not have, so you don't have a problem. The opening balance I'm putting here is the accumulated depreciation of the assets from the previous years. That has been put on your trial balance as provision for depreciation or accumulated depreciation. So you show those ones and then you put the total under the total column. So you see what we are doing. We are treating the cost components differently. We are going to deal with the depreciation components differently. When we are done, total cost minus total depreciation gives you the net book value or the carrying amount. And that will always be accurate for whatever account you are going to prepare. So once we are done with the opening balances, when we come to depreciations, listen very carefully, we don't have anything like additions. There is nothing like revaluations. Please take note. So the only thing up there that will also affect depreciation is the disposals. Because additions, we don't, do, we don't bring additions here. We will depreciate them, I'll show you. But we don't write anything like additions. And then we don't even show revaluations. So the only thing we show under this place is disposals. And the disposals that we have under the depreciation is different from the disposals under the cost. Now, when you are selling an asset, Let's assume you bought an asset for 100 CDs and it has an accumulated depreciation of 60, meaning that it has a net book value of $40. And you are selling the asset for, let's say, 55 or whatever. This is a selling price. We don't need this in the PPE schedule. Now, this is the original cost. This is accumulated depreciation. This is the net book value. When you are preparing the PPE schedule for the assets you are selling, the 100 CD, which is the original cost, is what you are bringing here as disposals. Then the 60 CD accumulated depreciation is what is coming here for depreciation disposals. So the disposal figures are not the same. One will reflect the cost of the asset being sold. One will reflect the accumulated depreciation of the asset being sold. So if the accumulated depreciation was not given in the question, they will still give you a date of purchase. And when you compare with the date, of reporting, you can calculate your own accumulated depreciation over the years for the asset being sold. And so accumulated depreciation of the asset being sold will also be shown in brackets and will also show as bracket for the total column. All right. So after, after you have brought your disposals, there is only one thing left, which you may do workings outside and bring it in. And that is the depreciation charge for the year. So we call it charge for the year. So the depreciation charge for the year is what you apply the rates on. So if you were told to apply depreciation on a straight line method, it will be applied on the cost. 
if it is on the reducing balance method, you know how to go about it. Okay, you take out the opening accumulated depreciation from the cost and it. So whatever the case will be, there will be depreciation charge. So you need to go and find the percentage, work your depreciation charges, and then you bring the depreciation charge here for each asset. So you add them, you are we are adding. The only thing we subtract here is the disposals. So we add all. So once you have your depreciation charge for the year, once you have your depreciation charge for the year, then we are done with the totals. So now we have total cost, total depreciation. So the next thing is the net book value or the current amount. Can do a double underline from there. So the net book value is cost minus accumulated depreciation. So you show that for each asset. And ladies and gentlemen, when you do this, you are done with your PPE schedule or your property plant and equipment schedule. Now, you should know that this schedule has given you a total depreciation already. So this is what you are going to use as total depreciation in your statement of profit or loss, except the question required that the depreciation should be taken to different places. Now, in a typical published accounts question, they can tell you where to take each one. They can tell you that depreciation of motor vehicles should be charged to administrative. Depreciation of equipment should be charged to cost of sales and all that. So we can separate where you take any of the depreciation charges. So ladies and gentlemen, this is your PPE schedule. The only thing you are going to do from external sources and bring it is a depreciation charge for the year. And that one, you need to understand how to calculate depreciation, especially using the one-month ownership basis, where the assets, there were media acquisitions and all that. You need to be smart on that one. But once you're able to get that right, you are good to go. Now, this figure we have here, this is why we have suffered, we have suffered to go through all that. This is the figure you need to take to the statement of financial position as property, plant, and equipment. So if this is note, note four, you get the right four and you pick this figure, the total PPE figure. Now, if you don't know how to do the PPE schedule, like I told you, you may decide to do these workings in a scattered way. But remember that you have three different assets. You work depreciation for each of them separately. You may forget to take some. If you are not careful, if you combine all of them, you may not get a correct figure. But the property, plant, and equipment schedule gives you a picture at a glance. And it is very effective. I have used it throughout my exam till today, from the time I understood this. And it has always helped me. It has never failed me. That is why I'm recommending that you master the property, plant, and equipment schedule. Try using it from henceforth, and you see how it's going to give you a great figure for the property, plant, and equipment to be included in the statement of financial position. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is an extension of the IES 16 videos it's, it's more like a part three okay it is also an extension of the video on the published account so that you need it in order to prepare your published financial statement so that is the end of our lesson on the property plant and equipment schedule remember to subscribe to this channel if it's your first time share this video let others also have a benefit and until we meet again for another video it is bye for now